Good morning, guys. Welcome to another YouTube video. This is episode four of Ultra Marathon Prep. So, um, with that being said, just gonna walk you guys through my day today. Um, have some work to do, but on top of that, you know, I'm gonna show you guys my running, my lifting, and then some other things that are really cool, which is getting a new pair of shoes. Because yesterday I went for a long run and my big toe poked straight through the freaking top of my shoe. So, I was four and a half miles into my 10 mile run. So I had to run back and my big toe kept getting stuck in the hole. I can show you guys but like the what the shoe looks like, but it effed up my other toe. Like my other toe is black and blue um, because it was trying to overcompensate for the big toe. Anyways, you get the story. Like I need new shoes regardless. So I'm gonna get some today and show you guys that and show you guys what shoes I get with the training and we're gonna hit the weights today. It's gonna be a bad day to be a weight today. So um, gonna go heavy as shit just to give the muscle reason to stay and uh, also incorporate some volume. My nickname should be Nathan Protein because I love protein. Every morning I pull a pound of ground beef, 95% lean beef out of the refrigerator and let it thaw. So that's gonna be what we do in the morning. Um, let it thaw while I work throughout the day and then for dinner, you know, it'll be ready to cook up. So with that being said, let's go get some shoes so I can run and then we'll lift. So let's do it. So I just got back and I'm gonna show you guys the shoes that I got. And also, if you didn't watch the last YouTube video, I had really bad chafing from my 20 mile run where to the point where like I couldn't, I could walk, but it was like, you know, it was, it was really painful. So I got what you guys requested, squirrels nut butter. So uh, it's butter for your nuts to help them glide. <laughs> I mean, or if you don't have nuts, like just help things glide. I, you could use it for anything. It doesn't have to be necessarily nuts, um, but yeah, you know, you get the point. It just helps lube in between the legs. Uh, so there's no chafing. So yeah, that's that. This is gonna be a game changer um, because I've been struggling a lot with that. But I'm gonna show you the new shoes. So these are my old pair, Gel Nimbus 25s, A6. These are my favorite running shoes to date. Um, had enough mileage on them. Now the way you can tell if your shoes are too worn is by, it starts to flatten out. Back here, the tread just starts getting really loose. You'll start noticing when you run on slippy surfaces too. They're extra slippy. If even on blacktop, it'll start getting slick when it's not even slippery, when it's not even raining, um, just because the tread's being worn. And also the cushion, like you guys can tell here, the cushion's just like really, it's starting to like, just, it doesn't look good. Um, and I, I started to notice that. And then my, on my run, my, my toe popped through the top of these. So yeah, it's time to get a new pair of shoes. So, no surprise, I wanted bright blue, but they didn't have that color. So um, I just got black and white, same shoes. Um, I love them, gentlemen. Just compare the cushion. See if the cushion oh yeah, yeah. You just to see like the difference. So, so you see how that's like all beat up. Obviously, these are you know a lot. There, there's like no stress in the cushion, which is like fresh foam here. So um, yeah, should feel real good. And yeah, like I said, these are the gel Nimbus. 25s, make sure you size up in all your running shoes because your feet swell, especially when you're running a good distance um, because the blood is just moving down to your extremities and your feet are gonna get bigger with the warmth and everything. So um, I, I'm normally a, a 12, so I half size up to 12 and a half. So yeah, these are my running shoes. So with that being said, we're gonna go run um, and test them out. Catch you then. What's up guys? Right now we have a 10 mile run. Over the 10 mile run, I'm gonna talk about how my uh, nutrition affects my performance at 210 pounds, balancing this ultra prep with weightlifting. So um, to give you an idea today, um, I don't make videos like this much, but today's kind of like an off day for nutrition for me. Um, so I'm just gonna be transparent and show you what that looks like. Now I have one of these maybe once every two weeks, maybe even once a month, but it just keeps me sane and it keeps me like, uh, on my shit, but yeah, pretty much today you're gonna see all that. 
But I want to say like the biggest thing to training is uh, making sure you're getting enough protein in, making sure you're getting enough calories in to fuel your training. Because a lot of people think, oh, I don't have the motivation or I don't have the discipline. But in reality, it's probably because you're under fueling or you're eating like shit. So it's destroying your motivation. I like to think as food as a fuel, it's like the spark to a flame and to, that makes a huge fire. Um, it's the food that you introduce it, it really has everything to do with like how you perform because if you don't feel good after you eat the food You're not gonna want to go work out and it's gonna make it all the more harder to go work out So I think just fueling your body with the right food um, Is gonna make you feel lighter on your feet energetic and overall you're just gonna get better and better and faster and faster and stronger and stronger So yeah, you're gonna dive right into that, but this is an intro 10 miles 133 beats per minute that's what we did 10 miles at 133 beats per minute wild um, so for those that don't know this past week I've been really struggling with uh, being a little under the weather with a little like fatigue kind of led to like a little sickness and then it also led to um, my feet got effed up from my shoes so you know I got new shoes and whatnot and I didn't realize when you get new shoes, you got to like kind of break them in. I just went for another 10 mile run and uh, it kind of gave me shin splints because the foam's not like, I guess it's stiff or whatnot. So yeah, I definitely felt that. I felt like I was running on barefoot, which was, which was fun. So uh, I got shin splints last week and uh, ran 10 miles today and I feel great. So yeah. And What's up guys? So post-workout sitting here in the car. So I'm just going to talk to you guys about nutrition. So one thing I want you guys to realize is 80% of your progress in the gym is nutrition. Now you can work your ass off, but if you're not eating enough or if you're eating too little, you're not going to make any progress. Or if you do, it's going to be very minimal. And that's a lot of times like no offense, but you see people in your gym or just people in general that, you know, every year they look the same, they don't progress. And it's because you don't factor in all the factors that it takes a lot of people think oh i can just train and then you know i don't have to worry about it you know like that's i get it like that's how i was the first two and a half years of my training but until i realized that the the turning point like this is think of like your your progress as like a clock um and say 12 is up here so you can get about this far to like say 2 30 3 o'clock just through training like that's the progress you're gonna make and say the full clock is maximal progress now when you add in just just a little bit of concepts like you know eating high protein eating you know carbs to fuel your workouts you'll get down so if this is 12 you'll get down to like four o'clock five o'clock you'll make a lot of progress you'll put on weight you'll put on muscle tissue then in order to progress down to six seven eight nine and just you know keep progressing that way you have to macros or you have to track your macros because um i mean you don't have to track them but you have to have a very good idea of what you're eating because that is it's like anything you can the more progress you make the harder it gets to make more progress so you know the most important thing after you hit that breaking point where most people are where they're like ah you know i'm not making any more progress you got to track your macros i always tell my clients um, even for a week, you know, it gets you, it gives you a good idea to understand what you're putting in your body. That way you can make adjustments. You don't have to track every day, but if you're eating similar foods, similar quantities, similar, similar portion sizes, you can adjust based upon what you're tracking. So that's what I do to track my calories. That's what I do to track my macros. That's how I make consistent progress because I'm constantly manipulating and same with my clients, manipulating their food intake and their training to facilitate growth. Um, because it's like anything, if you don't change, nothing's gonna change, um, especially when it comes to adding muscle tissue. So, you know, another thing I wanna say is, you're in the gym, right? And a lot of people will get frustrated because they're not seeing like the muscle that they want. Now, I want you to think of this, like everybody drives a car, you understand that some people in the winter or say they have a nice, let's just, I like Corvettes. So say they have a nice Corvette, they're covering it with a, a cover. Now, 
on the outside, you have no idea what that car is. You can kind of see the lines, you can kind of tell what it is, the structure of it, but you don't actually see what it is until you pull that cover off and that's just how the body fat works. You know, you're so kind of seeing lines, you're getting hype and you're like, uh, I don't actually have that much, much muscle. I'm not actually making that much progress if you're in a bulk or if you're, you got some fat on you. When you diet down, you will see a dramatic change in the lines, the muscularity, the, the fullness, the, the details. It's just like ripping that cover off that Corvette and you start to see the intri intricate parts of that car that you wouldn't have saw with that cover on it because it masks the detail of the car. And the same with the body fat. Literally, it is a cover on your body. You know, it's important to have some, but a lot of the times people have so much that they don't realize what fucking amazing physique they have under, you know? So you gotta like use that as motivation. Every single day you're dieting, think about it, you're just fucking pulling out that, that Corvette cover. You're pulling out that car cover um, and just pulling off the fat to reveal the details of who you are as a person, you know? Don't say you have fucking bad genetics. It's all calories. It's all consuming less energy than you intake to get to that shredded lean physique. To build muscle, it's eating in a surplus for a long period of time and then going down to maintenance and cutting your calories. And, and that cycle is how you build muscle and drop fat, build muscle, drop fat. You can main gain, but sometimes, you know, there's a fine area where it's tough. It's tough. You know, main gaining is good after you get to the physique you want, but to make substantial progress, I think you have to choose one or the other. Um, but with that being said, don't get discouraged because you have an amazing physique. I promise you, like God created everybody with an amazing physique. That's very different in every sort of way. Everybody has different insertions. There's not one person on this planet that has an identical insertion, identical six pack, identical whatnot placement of their abs biceps you know everybody's different so what i'm saying is the only real reason why you're say you're not satisfied with your physique is because you're not either you're not willing to sacrifice what it takes to get that physique when it comes to diet and nutrition or you just don't understand that you have a lot of muscle you have a lot of um details you have a great physique if you just uncover that body fat a lot of times and if you're you're listening to this and you're like oh you know i'm smaller i don't really have the muscle then don't worry about the body fat right now. Put on muscle tissue, lift hard, eat a good food, eat a lot of food. And then when it comes down to reveal that Corvette, that, that detail, the fine work of art that you created in the, the winter months or the gym, then you peel back the fucking, um, the cover on the car. So yeah, with that being said, I just want to say that, um, but it's really fucking really simple and uh people make it way out harder to be track your calories track your macros over time if you're not losing weight start to make changes in the way you want to go if you're not gaining weight man, it's probably you need to eat more food it's not there is no hard gainer man like you just got to throw back food you know this thing called peanut butter peanut butter jelly sandwiches um that's why i used to eat in high school football i mean there's this thing called mayonnaise and tuna mayonnaise and chicken man just get there's so many options um and as far as cutting calories you just you know when you're when your calories are up your calories are up don't eat all of them in the morning save them it's almost like say you someone gives you a gift card to spend it at whatever store you want and in each store you have something you like you're not going to just go spend it on one store you're going to go spend it on multiple stores and get kind of you know a balance of things that you enjoy so yeah that was just my post-workout truck rant. I'm going to start doing these more because I like to share the knowledge and keep it really simple and relate it back to shit. That's how I understand things is like relating it back to shit because people can do the science-based stuff, but the way science-based stuff becomes applicable is when you apply it to your life. So, yeah. That's that. Catch you guys soon. Show you guys what we have after the workout. We're not running today, so today's just a a vlog um, talking about nutrition and shit um, and I'll show you guys my meals and whatnot so yeah tracking calories right now gotta eat a lot with like running and shit so yeah go back show you guys some meals the post-workout meal I have 115 grams of avocado two eggs 250 grams of egg whites fat-free cheese mi mixed with reduced cheese 
with some everything bagel seasoning and some minced onion. So yeah. The reason I like a higher fat diet post run and protein is because it recovers me and satiates me. I notice with endurance training, you get really hungry because you're putting out these big efforts. So the only way for me to manage my hunger and to not like, well one, yeah manage my hunger but also inflammation like after a workout my inflammation is normally high same with everybody whether you're weight training or you're running it's a stress on the body so there's going to be some inflammation so this kind of just reduces it and kind of helps my body recover a bit better um, by like not introducing carbs right away i like to push back my carbs till you know later in the evening when i feel re well rested and and ready to consume those um, sometimes you know it helps me sleep as well so yeah I just like having a high fat, high protein meal post workout to replenish um, with the protein and to satiate me with fat. So, cheers. We got carbs, fats, proteins. Now, this is super easy. You can make it in the microwave. That's why I like doing it. So high in fiber. So right here we have chocolate fiber. Oatmeal has a lot of fiber. And we have one scoop of vegan raw protein just because I think it mixes good and it tastes good. Some stevia, and like I said, 200 grams of egg whites, 40 grams of oats, and then one egg. And I have the macros on my app for this. Um, I'm gonna add blueberries to it, but if you're curious and like the exact macros, I have it on my app. I do like my weekly meals. But yeah, this is gonna be everything. So I just tossed, tastes amazing. Um, just toss one scoop. And if I didn't say, I do do um, 200 grams of blueberries in this. So one egg, 200 grams of egg whites, 200 grams of blueberries, protein powder, fiber, and some stevia, and 40 grams of oats. Did I already say that? I, I just said it like... You just repeated the recipe like three times. Yeah, I did. So don't mess it up. <laughs> and yeah, I'll mix that, add some blueberries, frozen blueberries, cause like frozen blueberries in this, when when there's something warm and you add frozen blueberries to it, it just tastes like 10 times better. So mix this up and show you guys the finished product. So in this buffalo chicken dip, I'm sure you guys have tried this before, like at a Super Bowl or whatever, like football game, really popular, but it tastes amazing. I have a macro friendly option. So what I do is I do 30 grams of fat free mozzarella cheese. I do um, red hot wing sauce. Now I kind of just wing it depending on, no pun intended, depending on how hot I want it. And then I also do some, uh, make sure you get plain Greek yogurt because if you get like vanilla or something, it's gonna taste weird plain Greek yogurt, one serving of that fege. Um, and then I do six ounces of cooked chicken, which is being cooked right now. And I'm gonna show you guys the finished product. Make sure you mix all this together um, and then heat it back up so it gets a good consistency because this is gonna make it cold. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna show you guys the finished product right now. All right, so for dinner, if you guys know what Wawa is, I get a Wawa tuna sub. Now, if they don't put enough tuna in your sub, which clearly they did put a lot of tuna in my sub, but because they call me the protein monster, I'm adding some more tuna to it. So uh, yeah, tuna salad, Wawa, amazing. If you live on the East Coast, you know what Wawa is, slaps. So I'm gonna have this, like a thousand calories straight to the gullet. Good morning. So it is the next day, and as you guys saw the time lapse, we 
we put together the Christmas um, spirit here in the apartment. Um, even though, you know, like I don't, I don't know if it's too early or not, but um, it just feels good to switch it up because it's getting cold here in uh, Pennsylvania. So, yeah. Anyways, just like clockwork, you guys know, start the day off with protein, coffee, greens, and everything else that you guys normally see me start my day with, and then back to the grind, uh, run, lift, work, and yeah, just keep getting after it. So that's the YouTube video. Hope you like everything um, along this prep and uploading more consistency. Consistently, if you do, like, comment, subscribe. Stay corn fed. I'll catch you guys in the next one.